I'm Ben Lukuyu. I am an animal nutritionist. I work for IRI. I'm based in Uganda. I'm the country coordinator for COHESA, but I'm interested in uh, feeds and forages issues. And I want to see how my feeds and forages uh, fit into the whole mix of One Health. Uh, the previous presentation, very colorful, but very informative, laid uh, some of the basis for some of the things I want to raise with regard to feeds and forages. So uh, let's take it away. I think Alex uh, did a good job in discussing the One Health. I won't go back to that. I think the point I want to make with this slide is that although plant health is a crucial part of the definition of One Health, plants are typically Plant health is typically not well integrated in the health approaches. <laughs> and I think all of us agree with that, with that point. Um, and that's why I want to say, some of you may be wondering, why is this man talking about feed and forages in a conference that is focusing on one health? And I want to show you how that link comes in. Um, Feeds and forages play a very, very crucial role in the complex interaction between farm animals and human beings. Uh, as you know, we have to feed our animals, but us as humans, we also have to eat. And to feed our animals, we have to produce feeds uh, as well as forages. And we produce forages in the context of the environment. And Three key things there in the environment is soil. That's why I said my colleague already laid a very good basis uh, for that. And I'll be touching a little bit on soil a little later. Now in growing forages, there are inputs that we put there and they have implications on one health issues. Uh, as well, we have to produce other types of feeds. They need inputs and those inputs have implications on one health. And all these go into feeding our animals. And as you know, the, our animals uh, provide a conduit uh, through which some of the, 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 the things we eat may end up on the food that we eat, may end up actually on our tables, the, safe, the foods that the human beings uh, eat. At the same time, the users of those feeds are at risk uh, in using some of these inputs that go in, in producing feeds and forages. So let's see how some of those issues are. You may know that uh, plants provide more than 80% of what we consume as humans, but also a lot of, a huge proportion of what our livestock eat, perhaps more than 86%, depending on the production system that you're talking about. But plant diseases, uh, uh, the plant diseases and pests uh, can contaminate some of these feeds and forages that we are feeding to our animals with a range of implications, including uh, availability and safety of those plants that end up to, to feed the animals, the seeding ability, we have the yields that come with that, and the quality uh, that come with our foods. And this will determine uh, the biomass, the quantities, the availability of the feeds that end up to our livestock in our systems. So there are very many sources of contamination of feeds. Some of them we don't even think about, uh, about them. We have um, biochemical substances, we have the fertilizers that we use, we have the veterinary drugs that we use to, to treat our animals, uh, we have toxins, pesticides, mycotoxins, and even heavy metals that are present in the environment that are a health hazard to both animals and human beings. Uh, we also have uh, growth promot promoters, medicated feeds, environmental pollutants, and all sorts of things. I have tried to group them into three broad groups that I will briefly describe. The first thing is 
pollutants or contaminants that come about as a result of agronomic practices uh, when we are producing feeds and forages. The second one comes through the recycling of plant-based food waste and as animal feed and the manure that we use. Uh, they come from the animals, we, we, we compost those and use them back into the crops. And through that system, there is contamination which happens. And the sources of crop residues as animal feeds. You know plants provide a huge amount of crop residues that we use to feed our animals. So um, soil contamination, you had my colleague talk about the soil composition. He touched on some of those aspects of the co contaminations there from fertilizer, uh, industrial activities, um, some of the sewage and domes domesticated industrial wastes that end up in the soil and we grow feeds and forages on those, cro on those soils. As you know, soils uptake some of these chemicals and pollutants into the plant system and we feed those to an animal. Some of them actually pass through animal sourced feeds, um, uh, milk, meat, um, uh, and, and other animal sourced feeds that we eat. But apart from that, also the practices that we practice, particularly in smallholder systems, uh, we see grazing by the roadside and we know plants accumulate carbon that come from the vehicles that pass by and the animals consume a lot of that carbon on the plants that they graze by the roadside. Those has implications that I'll touch about. Growing forages in soils or, 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 or areas that are contaminated. In urban areas, we have urban farming and farmers are growing forages there for their animals. And in urban areas, we have a lot of areas that are where sewage actually accumulates. If you look at most farmers who are practicing urban farming, they grow their forages on those areas that have sewage contamination. And the implication of that is that the plants take in accumulated heavy metals uh, that have a risk of being passed on to the animals. Um, and the next other piece of um, hazard is the utilization of uh, fruit and vegetable waste as livestock feeds. Life vegetables and waste, there is a lot of pesticide use in vegetables um, and fruit industry. And these residues of pesticides and insecticides also accumulate in some of those pests, uh, fruit and vegetable waste, and therefore the risk of them going through to the animal. Um, the other bit I wanted to talk about are the microbial and uh, 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 prionic agents uh, that have the potential uh, to cause certain diseases like FMD, African swine fever, sal salmonellosis, and um, many more. I think we have vets here who really uh, understand those, those very well. And some of those come through the feed additives that uh, a lot of the farmers are now using uh, to feed uh, livestock. The other bit on recycling of food based, uh, uh, plant based food waste. Uh, I already talked about pesticides and uh, residues that accumulate in the forages. Uh, let me touch a little bit on manure as fertilizer. Uh, manure as fertilizer are present, uh, pathogens and uh, antimicrobial resistant genes are present in animal manure. Um, and some of the antimicrobials used in uh, uh, forage production. The antimicrobials include some of these growth promoters that are commonly used these days, and they have a risk uh, uh, to the animals that uh, we are producing. Now, a lot of these aspects I have to talked about have they not only get to the feed that we eat, but they actually get uh, in the animal sourced feeds that we produce from animals. Uh, there is evidence that some of those will get into the meat. There is evidence that some of them could actually end up in, in the milk that we eat, the eggs that we produce, and a risk that some of those will end up on the table 
on the meals on our plates that we are eating. And that is the implication of one health that is brought about by the feeds and forages that we are talking about here. Another aspect I want to talk about, which is slightly, uh, this is my second last, which is slightly um, uh, different is aplatoxin uh, prevalences in animal feed uh, and animal ingredients. A lot of you have heard about uh, the aflatoxins. That map just shows you the prevalence uh, in the world and the magnitude of the problem. The green are countries with less than 35% um, uh, prevalence. Uh, the yellow is less than 65% prevalence. And you can see the red is more than 65% uh, prevalence. Other areas, we may not have data for that. But on the left-hand side, you can see uh, the economic loss that comes with aflatoxins um, as, a, as a problem. Um, the aflatoxin plays a very crucial role in linking plants and animals. Uh, the aflatoxins are consumed by animals. You can see it down here. Uh, they are in feeds and forages. The, the cycle that I just talked about being going into the plants and ending up to, to our table. On the left-hand side are the effects of aflatoxin, both in humans, uh, in ruminants, and also on the feed efficiencies of the livestock that we, we are, are producing. Uh, quite a range of diseases there in humans, especially cancer, which is responsible for a lot of the deaths that are reported with regard to aflatoxin. So potential strategies that we could think about uh, to overcome this. Obviously, um, it's clear that not one stakeholder on one set of people or one set of approach can be able to solve all these issues because they cut across uh, very many displays. But there is, it's evident that there is lack of information about the health risks associated with this, uh, the, the, the feeding of livestock and the risks involved that we are talking about. Uh, the policy options are not very obvious uh, that can support uh, us in mitigating some of these risks that are brought about uh, by the issues that I've outlined above. And obviously, capacity building is a key thing that might help us to overcome the gaps that I've just talked about. There could be other options that I'm, I have not uh, listed uh, here. So the takeaway um, thing for me is that key and realization that while we have um, some of these plant health risks associated with feeding our animals, rarely do many people think that those risks can end up on the plate uh, of food that they are eating. So the risks are, are real and they are there. Um, we need to think about management practices around these issues that will help to reduce uh, these risks and losses that are associated with feed and food safety. And by the way, we always talk about food safety and don't think about feed safety. So I always challenge people, while you think about food safety, please think about the feed safety because that feed safety will end up on the plate of food that you are eating at home. And lastly, uh, plant health and public health research and practice is still needed in these areas to address those gaps, the technologies uh, themselves, and the education to ensure the balance uh, of feed and food safety uh, in providing food security. And of course, above all, we, we need a One Health approach in integrating all these things together uh, to be able to address a wide range of issues that I have, I have raised here. Thank you very much.